Howdy folks, I'm the Tall Turtle, and welcome back to X-Plane 11. We are going to check out the FlyJ Sim 727 200 Advanced in X-Plane 11.40. On their Discord, they said, do not update to 11.40 and fly other planes. They never said why, and I haven't been back to their Discord because I haven't had time. But we're going to do it anyway. We're in 11.40, I'm going to try other plane. I just want to see what happens. It's, I mean, I'm assuming it's going to work okay. But maybe there's some obscure system thing that people try to use and there's a problem. I don't know. I just know that um, we're going to fly at 1140 and see how it goes. I don't know why I have the rear stairs down because um, we're at a gate. So let me bring those up. That's shift F1 in case you're wondering. Alrighty. Super quickie flight today. Um, I just want to test this plane out and then we will redo that long flight to Estonia in another video. But today it's South Texas. Again, you can always check the description below for our destination and departure information. But I'll tell you, we are starting in San Antonio, Texas, and we're going to head south to Corpus Christi. Um, don't really have any stories. Well, I kind of have a story about Corpus Christi. Maybe I'll tell you. It's not that exciting. But we do have a flight plan written out on paper by hand. Um, it's going to be interesting. The first part, not a big deal. The... You know, leaving one VOR going to another, that's not a big deal. There is an intersection between VORs. We've done that many times before. The approach, though, is going to be quite fascinating because we're going to fly to a VOR, have to get down to 1,600 feet, and then we have five miles to fly towards the localizer. So even though we don't have ATC to vector us into the localizer, this approach should help us. This approach is easy to read. So just a little reason for what I'm talking about. In real life, you don't really fly slant off anymore. But <laughs> if we did, if we were to, we would get towards the airport. And then if we wanted to use a localizer approach like we are today, ATC would vector us in and then tell us how to capture, you know, like turn right this degrees, turn left that degrees, and then it would catch us. With the view with the localizer right but we don't have atc so we sometimes have to fake it to make it sometimes in this case the localizer plate has a vor and it says leave this vor at 162 and then five miles intercept the localizer and then turn to 129 degrees that's super easy and it's written out for us normally i have to do that what i'll do is i'll find the vor and head towards an airport and I'll often put a VOR near the airport into NAV2 so we know where it is and then get us in the ballpark and hopefully we pick up the localizer if we're within, within range of localizer. Um, we've never missed and had to go around to recapture localizer. I mean, we've missed because of the my process of landing, but not navigation-wise. Um, otherwise, what I could have done in this case also was use the VOR plate to get us in the ballpark and then switch over localizer. So this was an easy one to plan. A lot of times it's not. I just have to use VORs to get us in the ballpark in the hope we're within a few degrees to capture localizer. So it's tricky because we don't have ATC. That's the only part I dread about flight planning for this type of flying because you never know how it's going to work out. And I don't do practice flights with these because they're so involved. I wouldn't have time to do a practice flight and then record. So I just fly it. Um, but it should be okay. The only thing is it's going to be busy. And I'm going to hand fly that whole approach. Because trying to get autopilot to respond quickly enough for these VORs five miles apart. No, it's not going to happen. So it's going to be hand flown. So once we get to the penultimate VOR, we'll be at 1,600 feet. And then I'll hand fly from there. So it should be. Whoop, that airplane's taken off. That's not the runway we were going to use. We were going to use that runway that's parallel to us right now, but he's using that one. Um, hopefully the ATIS will tell us what runway's in use. I guess it's that one if he did. Is he going to rotate anytime soon? There he goes. Yay, that's fun. That was fun to hear and fun to see. Roller Brothers turned on. It's about 7.45 in the sim, I think. What does it say here? Um, one off says... Yeah, 740, 740. Okay. Anyway, so that's the flight plan. I know you don't get to see it. I just talked it out, but at least you get to see it in action. I just wanted to let you know how that works because it's 
I'm one of the very, very few people who actually fly True Slant Alpha. A lot of people who fly this plane use the FMS option and put in FMS. And then you just put in everything and you just turn off autopilot at minimums and land. That's boring. I like to do all the work. I do all the flight planning by hand. I just do it all by hand. Um, the only time we don't do it by hand is when we fly the Eclipse. Because that has a computer and we just get a flight plan from a website. So... There we go. Long introduction. Actually, not really. Um, that's just how this plane is. All right, what are we doing first? We're going to do some passengers and cargo. I think that's up here. Um, I think I think this is like a 127 nautical mile flight or so. So let's have our fuel. Tells us the distance. 127. Let's do 300. Because let's do 350, actually. Let's do 400. Um... This is a lot of people for a flight this short. But hey, everybody wants to go to Corpus Crispy. Corpus Crispy. <laughs> Crispy cream. Everybody wants to go to Corpus Christi to hit the beach. I've heard the beaches are pretty fun there. I honestly have no idea. Um, I have never been anywhere fun like that. I've been to LA with my friend, with my friends, my family, and met some friends. But um, otherwise, I don't get out much just in the airplane. Don't feel sorry for me, but you can hear my voice. My wife has been all over the world, lived in other places of the world. I've been to Canada at a very rural crossing with Ohio plates. That was interesting. I've told that story somewhere. Alrighty, let's see. We got everything set how we want it. Let's take that back. Alright, let's get this thing started up. Sometimes starting this thing up is longer than the flight. Almost going to be that way here. Battery on. There we go. Over to APU, which is which preset? This one. APU, we're going to trip these things. And we're going to start her up. Whoa, hold that. Start this thing up. Um, temperature's rising. While waiting for that, we'll turn off the light test. There we go. Alrighty. That's settled in. So here we go. We're going to close. Well, we're going to close field in that one. There we go. Good. External power should have turned itself off. And it did. Very nice. Let's get some lighting set up here. We want our beacon on our wing logo, or our logo, I mean, and our wing lights. Um, let's get our strobe on because we're going to be moving soon. Let's see. Interior lighting. Don't need to mess with that. No smoking. Where are you? Seat belt. Emergency lights are armed. Stall warning. If we hear that, it's too late. Window heat on. There we go. APU bleed. Confirm open. Cooling doors confirm open. Um, disconnect air cart and GPU. And the sounds changed, and we still have PSI, DC meter to ESSTR. Yeah, it already is in this one. I should just write confirm DC meter to ESSTR. Gasper fan on. Right AC pack on. Air pressure. Set cruise altitude. Okay. This is a really fast flight. Um, let's go 20,000. Yeah, we might not even get there. Landing altitude, I forgot to check, but it's pretty much sea level, I think. It's too far, though, to pick up on the map, I assume. Barely. What is it? K and GP. Yeah, it's right. We're following this air airway here. We're going to go here, and then here, and then right there's our destination. You can kind of see the VOR thing. So we don't have landing altitude, but I assume it's going to be, like, sea level. Um, let's see. Where are we? That was air pressure. Switch to ground. It automatically is. Flight plan stuff. And AP altitude. Let's do that first. What did I say we're going to fly? Where's my gauges thing? There it is. Uh, what did I say? 20,000? Even though we might not get there. Okay, flight plan stuff. Here we go. If you want to know how I do Slant Alpha, just watch any of my 727 videos. Or, I do have a Slant Alpha video. The only one on YouTube. 
and it's like an hour long, but people are, are thankful for it. The five people who fly for Slant Alpha. <laughs> Slant Alpha means VOR to VOR. Um, yeah. All right, let's see. So we're going to leave 116.8. 116.8. And then we're going to head to 114. Come on, big circle. 114, I'm sorry, 111.4. Double check, very important. 116.8. Heading towards 111.4. So we're going to put 111.4 in here. Because we're heading towards that. And then the one after that is 115.5. I'll briefly talk about this in a moment again. Double check. Heading towards 111.4. Heading towards 115.5. So the reason why I do this is we're going to leave this VOR, which is noted here and here. And then our second VOR will pop in, and we know the distance if we have any intersections, and they'll tell us here, and here it'll point at it. Pretty simple. And then what happens is I'll switch over to this one. And then I'll put our next VOR over here on standby, and then I'll put our next VOR beyond that, and this one for standby. So this, the nav 2 always is one ahead of us. And then nav 1 is where we're going to or from, or from or to, I should say, in that order. So we're going to leave this one, fly to this one, and then when we get here, this is when we hand fly. And then after this, when we fly towards it, I'll put the localizer in standby, and I'll put the airport in too. So what happens then is... Number two, which is this one, will always, you can remember because it's two lines, see one line for nav one, two lines for nav two. This will always point at the airport in case we get lost or something happens. If we, we want this to point straight up at 129 degrees, that's if we get lost. If we point this straight up and it's at 129 degrees, we're heading directly towards the airport. And then we should pick up a localizer by then. So you'll see it in action. It's not nearly as difficult as this sounds. It's one of those things, you do it the first time, it's very stressful. Second time, it's okay. Third time, you don't even have to think about it. Um, but it does take some practice. And very few people fly this way. But this is how it was done. And then if you want to go overseas or something, it was dead reckoning, which I don't know how to do yet. Um, Let's see, on that note, people. some people say that's why these are like this. They can see the stars for Dead Reckoning. Other people say no. I really don't know. All right, that's our flight plan for the most part. Um, yeah, we'll refer to that constantly. Um, depending on feeling, we may do some of the VR changes on camera, but that makes for a very long video or causing me to split up the video sometimes. So I'll usually just cut that stuff out, but it's fun to see it too. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. All right, flight plan stuff done. Let's see, where was that? Okay, autopilot, autopilot altitude done. Weather. We should have an ATIS here. It's a gigantic airport. Holy moly. I haven't flown in a busy area in a long time. Okay, here we go. ATIS 118.9. Oh, my leg is cramping up because my butter pedals are under my desk, or under my feet. 118.9, let's go down here. We have not done ATIS in this airplane, so I think it's going to be this one. I would assume it's this one. One, what? 118.9, and it's working. Information tango. All right. 1200 Zulu um, weather. Wind light and variable. Visibility 10. Sky conditions 2000 broken. 25,000 broken. Temperature 3, 2.1. Altimeter 3029. Arriving runways 31 right, 31 left. Departing runways 31 right, 31 left, 04. Advise on initial contact, you have Tango. Okay, so this would be runway 13. No, it didn't. This would be runway not even on here. 4. This would be runway 4, and that's what that airplane was using. I was planning on using this one, which would be 31, and that's what the ATIS says. So I don't know what the heck that AI plane was doing, but um, ATIS clearly says use this runway, which was our plan. Huh. All right, let's be pay attention to this. What's the barometer? Altimeter 3029. 30... Whoops, wrong way on this one. 3029 departing 31 right 
31 left. Yeah, we're going to use 31 left because we're over size. 31 left. Got it. Let's get this thing off of there. Thank you. Okay. I love using that ADIS. I don't know why it took me three years or something to use it. Alrighty. Close the stairs. Doesn't apply. Turn on the eight fuel pumps. Here we go. I love starting this plane up. I love everything about it. It's just super involved. It takes a long time to start it up. It takes a long time to fly. It takes a long time to land. Long time to plan. But it's still like my favorite plane. It just takes forever. Which is funny because I prefer GA aircraft. But I love this one. It's my favorite. Turn off AC packs because we need all the power we can get. All bleed valves confirm open. And they are set better pushback. Okay. I haven't used better pushback in a very long time. I hope it works in 11.40. I didn't think to look it up. Um, okay, so we want to do... We want to go here. We want to go right here. Like this. And do I click? Yes. And then I hit enter to accept. All right, Captain. Got the directions. Let me know through the menu when you're ready. I'm ready now. So, I do plugins, better pushback, and whoopsie, start pushback. Uh oh, it froze. Great news, okay, Captain. good. Your toe's coming. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Um, once we get pushed back, we'll start the engines. We won't start them until we get pushed back. So we're gonna sit here and wait for our tow. And he'll say something about the parking brake when he gets here. And then once we start going back, we'll start the engines. All right, there he is. I guess we can use free camera and um, zoom in on this guy here. There we go. And like I said, at some point, he'll say something about a parking All brake. All right, looks like the doors and hatches are closed and we're ready to connect. Okay, please connect. All right, so far so good. I don't know who writes the code for this and does this, but they're geniuses. They have to be. This is amazing. Welcome aboard, Captain. Toes connected. Bypass pens inserted. Go and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. All right, kill the parking brake. Whoops. Let's use this preset. There we go. Here and comes the pushback. Light right. them up. Light them up. That means start the engines. Okay, here we go. Um, order two, three, one. Why am I using my wrong preset? I'm gonna start this. We're gonna go to ground, right? It's been a long time. Ground. Yes. Replace cover. When. This gets to 25, and 2 will introduce fuel. In the meantime, this is super cool. Look at this. Awesome. Yay, I love it. All right, there, there's 25. Get down here. Fuel 2. There we go. And then when it stabilizes and the light goes out, we can start engine 3. But we're impatient and it's a sim, so let's start engine 3 now. There you go. Same process. Come down here. Once it gets to 25, we'll introduce fuel. There's 22, 4, and 5. We'll introduce fuel. And it should spool up. And how's our pushback doing? Very nice. Let's head up and do engine number th one. Set to ground. Come down here. When it gets to 25, we introduce fuel. There's 24 and 25. Introduce fuel. It'll stabilize. And then we're good to go. But let's check that pushback. He's still going. Very cool. Eventually he'll tell us to um, set the parking brake, I assume. That's a cool shot right there. Awesome. We need to wait until he's off before we do our hydraulic B. So we just have to sit here for a minute. We were a little hasty with the engine start, but that's okay. I guess I didn't need him to push us back to the other side of the airport. I just want to make sure we were straight. Oops, this is funny. Alrighty, setting parking brake right here. And let's come back because I really want to watch him. I'm going to give you a moment. I want to watch this. I want to see if he spins around in his chair before he drives away. I assume he will. Disconnect and hand signals. There we go. And he spun around and he's gonna drive away. Yay! What are you waiting for, dude? Gonna have to drink the water? Alrighty, hop inside. Let's continue our journey of starting this up. Hydraulic on is already A is already on. B is now on. 
close with this three generator ties. Close, close, close. I already signaled. You're gone. You're not even there. You're gone. Oh, oh, there he is. Alrighty. Um, galley power on over here. Like so. Both AC packs on. Cargo heat to normal. Essential powers to generator. Essential powers to generator. This is an error. Don't worry about it. It's a bug. AC meters bus tie, and they already are. Make sure there are no lights. Well, that's on, but that's a bug. It's known. No lights down here. Fuel heat off. Confirmed. Alright, here we go. Back up front. Anti-ice. We're not going to worry about it. Pedo heat. Well, engine or probe heaters, I guess they call it. And this one. Um, trip to APU. And trippy, trippy. And APU off. The wind down uh, The wind down sounded so scary. There it is. But everything should still be running. And it is. Very nice. Alright, pressure switch from ground to flight. Come on, there you go. Cabin pressure and temp control. Uh, let's do auto. Keep it there. Gasper fan can come off. APU bleed closed. Alright, come up here. Check our references and speed bugs. Let's pull up our V card. We want to take off with flaps 20 at 116, which is that right there. Flaps 20, which if you look over here, is 4 o'clock on the dial. Can we see from here? We can. 4 o'clock on the dial. There we go. Um, Chuck TCAS. Where's my preset for that? I thought I had a preset for that somewhere. I can't find it, so we'll just use this one. Um, this is already on, isn't it? System on. I don't know if it even is supposed to work. It's supposed to work. They had a whole update just for this to work. And I have it. I just haven't used it. All right, World Weather is turned on for the flight. I think I mentioned that. If not, it is. All righty, begin taxi. Taxi lights on with runway turn off. Nav and strobe. Strobe already on. Nav can come on, so these should all be on right now. Yep. Auto brakes to RTO. This is that one. And start the flaps coming down. All righty. So, flaps coming down. All right, let's hop outside. And we're going to taxi. That's my rudder. Oh, my rudder's all screwed up. Let me reset my rudder pedals. All right, rudder is working now. I don't know what's been going on yesterday and today doing my flying. My rudder pedal would just jump to the left. I don't know why. Um, it's not my pedals because it used to happen with my old pedals as well. Or my old rudder control as well. So it's not my pedals. Something in the sim. All righty, parking brake off. And that guy's going to use the wrong, wrong runway. Whatever. We're just going to taxi here. Keep these flaps coming down. Oh, this is fun. I love these big planes. Even though I prefer GA overall, I still love the big planes too. Alright, let's see. What I should do is get like the 777, which I actually own, even though it's completely outdated, and just fly that slant alpha. Because um, I'm not a fan of throwing things on the computer, letting the computer do it. It has its purpose, obviously, and that's how it's done in real life. But I like doing it by hand. Oh yeah, my camera's going to drift to the right. Now that's another bug. When I use my rudder, my camera moves. Don't know what's going on there. It's always done that. Even with X-Plane 10. Okay, let's see. we got to make this little chicane here. And then we need to get out to a runway. Yep, see how it does weird stuff. Oh, it wants us to go that way. But I don't want to go that way. I want to go exactly where it's telling me not to go. So there's some weird thing in the air design here. Not exactly sure what's up with that. <laughs> but we want this taxiway here. And that's 31 left, right? Correct? 30. Well, that's 30 left. Um, is that 31? Oh, I thought that would have been 4. Hang on. Okay. No, it is 31. Okay. You know how the magnetic headings change and the runway numbers change? When this airport was designed, it was 30, apparently. 
and it's since changed magnetic heading to 31, or like, you know, closer to 31 than 30. See, it says 31 on the run. It says 31 on the pavement. So whoever designed this airport, whatever you, they were using for reference, um, maybe they're using multiple reference materials and they just didn't agree with each other. Oh, wow. That was an overshoot. That was horrible. Anyway, let's get going here before the next airplane comes. Stop. Set parking brake. That was crazy. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? Flaps. Have to come down one more. Landing lights on. With you keep taxi lights on on this, I guess. Check the flaps. They're at 20. Trim. All you do to set trim is just click in the green band. And note the time on the clock. The sim clock says 8.05. A little behind schedule, but that's okay. Alrighty, N1 on the throttle, which, if you're not familiar with this, or N197, which is right where the yellow is, you don't floor this thing unless you really have to. 92 for climb. So we're going to take off, draw back to 92, gear up, flaps up. You know what I forgot to do is um, set our course. So we have our departure at 116.8. We want to set the course. 160 so that's how we know where we're going <laughs> so we are going to it looks like we're going to go out and turn a very very sharp right we got to come all the way back I guess left would be faster we got to go all the way to here okay okie dokie set heading bug to runway heading just in case we screw up autopilot at least we'll go runway heading. So, how much are we going to hand fly? I don't know. At the end, we're going to hand fly the whole approach, but in the beginning, I'm not sure. We'll see. All right, flight plan on one side, um, checklist on the other. Get the mouse out of the way. Take off that parking brake. Let's go. Let's make sure they spool up nicely, and then go all the way to 97 on N1. That gets us well, more throttle, more throttle. 97 is right, don't too much, right there. And hang on tight, everybody. 80 knots. Do not need much runway. E1. That was the whole point of this airplane, is that it could do regional flights without much runway. You're coming in. Flaps coming in to stay on schedule. Nose down just a little bit. Watching our speed. Watching the flaps to stay on the flap schedule. Flaps should come in at about 200. So, nose down a little bit. Start to turn to the left. Flaps coming in because we're at 200. I can't see our VSI because of the yoke but we're climbing pretty steeply bring those throttles back to 92 there we go close enough turning it all the way around just get our um, speed bug to 250 so we can go autopilot in a moment although this hand flying is super awesome but i really want to sightsee i want to see san antonio from the plane from the air but we can't because we're hand flying that's okay Normally, I do autopilot at the very end of the runway. As soon as we lift up, I engage autopilot usually, but I just want to hand fly because it's been a long time. Let's get that nose down a little bit. Let's head to 250 now. All right, the localizer is intercepted. Or not localizer, the VOR is intercepted. Let's go a little bit more to the left. Let's get our speed up. Watching the gauges because we're in the clouds. I push down too hard. There's... Our 250. And let's come down and engage autopilot. So, autopilot engaged. Alt set. IS hold. Nav lock. Letting go of the yoke. And it should slow us down to 250 because we're way over the speed limit. How did that happen? Huh. We're going to get a big speeding ticket. All right. Intercepting the VOR. 
it'll slow us down. Bring back throttles to help it out a little bit here. Yeah, let's bring back those throttles a lot to help us out. There we go. Awesome. Intercepting the VOR. Climbing at the speed limit till 10,000. Hopefully we don't get a speeding ticket. And we, folks, are all set. We have a few things to do, though. Um, for example, turn the gear off. Confirm the flaps are in. Keeping the speed till 10 grand. And then at 10 grand, we will turn off landing lights and increase our rate of climb to 280. Um, auto pack trip cutout. It should already be cut out. Where is that? It's over here somewhere. Where is our cutout switch? Right here in front of my face. Yeah, that's there. Just cool. cooling doors don't need it. 18,000 feet. We'll do standard barometer. Seatbelt off. We do not turn the seatbelt off when... Um, when um, I fly. We always have a seatbelt. Right. Okay, there we go. Now we can increase our throttles again back to 92. Because good grief. That wasn't very responsible. Where are ya? 92. 92 and 1. What am I saying? Yeah. A little bit more. There we go. Okay. Alright, we're almost at 10 grand. Then we have a few things to do. But for right now, let's look outside if there's anything left to see. Since we kind of had a lot going on there, we kind of missed the city. I apologize if you wanted to see the city from the air. If you do want to see San Antonio from the air, let me know and we will do a VFR flight in San Antonio. Just let me know in the comments. Otherwise, we're flying this plane, so we didn't have much time to sightsee. We are flying this plane. Alright, there's 10 grand. We can increase this to 280. There's 280, 50, 60, 70, 80. I guess those are tens. Alrighty. 280 there. Confirm we're at 92 there. Come back here and all this should be... Yeah, that because we were so steep. It'll balance out. That's all in the green. Ooh, that's barely in the green. Why is that barely in the green? Because we're at 94%. Let's bring it back to 92. There we go. Landing lights can come off. Like this and this can go to off disarm oh disarm thank you everything else stays the way it is we are cruising did it overshoot that VOR oh, of course it did so we're 48 miles from the next VOR we can switch to the next VOR at any time there's not an intersection oh yes there is 35 miles out um what how can that only be 49 it's supposed to be 70 what 114, 111.4. Oh, 70 total. Yeah. So this gets to 35. We have an intersection. And then we'll change VORs. So let's get the heading bug ready. Is it really this windy? Wow. So we're tracking that direction. But we're actually facing this direction. Is that cool? Alrighty. Um, so when that gets to 35, we have a VOR change, which we will do on camera together. Might as well. That's the whole point of flying this plane. Is the slant alpha stuff. Not much to see, but we'll do a little bit of sightseeing, and then I'll catch you in a moment for the VOR change. Here we go. All right, 35 miles, and we already re reached cruise, so let's get the VOR chain set up. So this is the way this works. We do our heading bug, and we do heading select. We switch VORs, and we want to do what? What do we want to do? Uh, 126, 157. 126 is outbound, 157 inbound, so we go like this, and that's lit up here, so we can come down here and do 
they have lock just like that um, we need standard barometer as well above 18,000 feet to what what is it two nine or nine or two just gonna screw up our autopilot a little bit it's gonna make us very mad so it's gonna bounce around to catch it that's okay um, the VOR is intercepted already and we're on track for that so now let's get the next VOR set up we just have to watch our speed here because at this altitude we're gonna overspeed very easily let's get our next VOR set up so we're heading into 111.4 after that is 115.5 let's switch this to 115.5 so we can actually navigate to it um, and then after that is the actual airport which is 114 even there we go so we're heading towards we're heading towards 114.4 then we'll head away from that towards 115.5 and then we'll tune in the localizer here this tells us when 115.5 is and then after that we'll put in the airport so that it'll point to it but we won't hopefully we won't need this but we'll just have it ready to go so we're going here to here, from here, to here, from here, and then I'll put a localizer in here. Boom, just like that. There we go. Look at that big tracking difference, less a heading bug, just in case we need to use it. Why isn't it pointing towards the view bars? These should be straight up eventually. Oh, it overshot a little bit. Okay, how's the computer do its thing? We're at 20 grand. We're going to overspeed. Let's bring back throttles. Let's check our temperatures. They're still good. See, I told you that would balance out. Bring back throttle just a little bit. Yeah, we're still climbing. We're still raising our speed. Okay, we're good. Um, 20 miles. Then we gotta make another VOR change. Okay, so, well, not really. We're 20,000 feet up, right? 20 divided by 5 is 4. So we're actually 4 miles up. So this will never get below 4. So when it gets to 5 or so, we'll change VORs. And I'll tune back in with you. So enjoy another 45 seconds of sightseeing or so. All right, just about time to change VORs. I want to catch it before station passage, though. Otherwise, it s curves for a long time. So let's come down here. Let's set the heading bug. We are flying out of 111.4 now at 126 degrees. So we're going to change this to 126 degrees. 126 degrees. Come on. All right, it's the same um, VOR, so we're not going to do localizer yet or VOR lock yet nav lock we're going to wait for it to flip around so let's watch this together and it should flip around when we do station passage and then we will um uh why isn't it flipping around well it's already did where are you come on um what did i miss nothing i think i was being impatient whoa our speed keep an eye on our speed there's three. There we go. There's the flipping around. There we go. Just what I wanted. Keep an eye on that speed, too. Good grief. There we go. It's coming down. Okay. So now we can make our left turn. And it should turn like this. And then I will do... It's lit up. Loc is lit up, so we could switch the nav lock now. Um, I just want us to straighten out a little bit with this. But then we will. Just about before the turn finishes. See? There's the VOR right there. Boom. Alrighty. So for the next VOR, flying in 115.5, there's no intersection. So we just have to keep an eye on this here. And then we'll switch over just before it. So there we go. We're just about done with that. So now let's do nav lock. Let's make sure everything is set. We're going to fly out of this one. We'll fly towards this. We'll switch at the last minute. We also need to be down to 1600. By then, I better calculate my TOD. And then um, we'll flip this over at the last minute. Simple as that. Uh, 
All right, so the plane is going to S-curve to find this VOR, and of course it is, because it's just a little old computer. Um, TOD was a long time ago, because I was so busy with my stuff. So we're 36 miles to the next VOR. we got to come down now. We will be using spoilers for this descent. We want to set this to oops, 1,600, like so. There we go. And we want our descent speed to be about 300, so let's bring back throttles immediately. There's our horn. Um, and let's do our new alt. Our new alt, thank you, and our new IS alt. And it's going to probably raise us to slow us down. That's okay for now. we got to keep an eye on our distance. 32 miles, 31 miles to our next VOR. Oh, boy. We are going to have a lot going on in a very short amount of time. We'll definitely be using spoilers for this descent because we got to come down fast. Um, let's get our destination weather information if we can. And now it is crunch time already, even though we're only... Well, yeah, we're about three quarters of the way. Look how fast we came from this area to this area. Um, Corpus Crispy is... Corpus Crispy, I said it again. It's KMGP. And what is our ATIS information? 127.9er. So let's switch this. Move on my way, please. To 127... 127 Niner and there it is. Okay, a lot of information here. What is that telling me? All right, well, um, altimeter 3026. The runway, the only ILS I found is not runway 35. So we're going to have a problem here. I got to think about this a second. All right, so if we do the only ILS approach, which is runway 13, we're going to have like a perfect tailwind. And we can't land this plane with a tailwind. So we need to do runway 35. That's what it wants us to do. It's a pretty short runway. So we are going to come down. And when we see the airport, because we don't have ATC to vector us to runway 35, we're going to have to um, use our brains and figure this out manually. So normally what would happen right now is ATC would start vectoring us to runway 35 because it's completely not where we're going. It's perpendicular and opposite from where we're set up to do. So this is going to be very interesting. This is going to be very fun. So what are we doing? Let's keep track of what we're doing here. First of all... We're 10, we gotta slow this plane down. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I know. Spoilers are out. Let's slow this down to two, like just over 200. Spoilers should be out. Yeah, spoilers are out. We're gonna slow this plane down as much as possible and get down. Because I totally overshot everything. Let's get our landing lights on. And let's get our brakes to max because I freak out. And let's bring this plane straight down, which will be okay because we have to circle around the entire airport anyway. This way we'll be out of traffic, but we really got to bring this plane down now. Um, 18,000 feet, we need to change our barometer back. What was it? 30, uh, 3026. Let's come up here and go 3026. 30. Don't, oh, weather's updating. Don't crash. There we go. 3026. Okay. Um, next localizer. Let's use heading bug a second. 115. We want to leave it at 162 degrees. See how fast this is happening? This is very crazy. We're leaving at 162, which is there. Okay. Heading bug is fine. Localizer has been picked up. Let's bring it to Navlock. We're at 115. Here we're going to put in, not localizer, the last VOR. Here we're going to put in the VOR of the final airport. Same with this because um, it does, localizer doesn't matter. There's no localizer for our runway. It's going to be visual approach. It's GP or GPS RNF only. It's 114. We'll point at the airport. How are we doing? We're good on speed. We're going to overfly the airport. I think. Nope. Good. What do we have in here? 
We have 115. We're going to 115. 19 miles away. Good, good, good. Okay. Nice. I think we saved it. We're not going to be too high. Let's bring those spoilers in and arm them. I think we're going to be good. Um, let's see. Let me think this through. We're heading towards 115.5. It is 17 miles away. We are doing heading bug. We are going to intercept the nav here. We are good to go. We're 13,000 feet up. We slowed way down. All the lights are on. Everything's ready for landing. Even the spoilers are armed. See that? And ready to go. We'll use them if we need to. I think we're good without being unrealistic or anything. There's Station Passage. Please bring us there. Why? No, that should be Station Passage. I just finally picked it up. That was weird, flipping over. Whatever. Um, yeah, that was Station I'm looking at the wrong thing. This is Station Passage. Of course it is. Good grief. Okay, we're 14 miles from the airport, which is great. We're going to fly around the airport, though. Pretty much to... I guess we can go to the left. See, this is where, this is where ATC would be really nice to vector us in. I'm looking at the airport diagram, and it's kind of screwed up because it isn't orientated with the airport to the north. It's kind of sideways. So I have to make that change in my brain. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to follow this VOR. Leave out 126 as planned. When we get a visual on the airport, we will, um, or 162 I meant. When we get a visual of the airport, we will use our heading bug to steer us around the airport since we don't have ATC. Holy moly, this is happening fast. We're 11,000 feet. We're 10 miles out. We need to be at 1,600 right now. <laughs> That's funny. Let's bring the spoilers back out. So we descend very steeply. Um, because there's the ocean. The airport is only 10 miles away. We're supposed to be at 1,600 feet. That's fine. Doesn't really matter because we need to fly around the airport. Because if you think about it, we're set up for a runway 13, 130 degrees. The airport, or the runway we want, is 35, which is 350, which is pretty much opposite direction, right? It's still 35? Or 4. I, don't even, I didn't even see 4 on the map. I just saw 35. I think 4 is a little tiny one. So we're going to fly like this. We should get a visual of the airport as soon as you break through these clouds. And um, let's actually slow down to 180 and start getting flaps out. Our flap schedule is... What's our flap schedule preset? I don't know. Let's use this one for right now. Um, 192 sets of flaps. So we'll get our first set out in a minute. Our landing. We want to land at 30 flaps. At 125 plus 5 plus gusts. So 30 flaps, which is 5 o'clock on the dial. And 125 plus 1 plus gusts. So we want to be... Basically landing and touching down right about there. What are we at? 8,000 feet. About to fly over the airport. Wow, look at that wind. Get a heading bug ready because we're going to need it for the rest of this. Actually, I'm just going to hand fly. But um, Yeah, let's hand fly. So let's use heading bug at 35 or 350 so that we know where the airport orientation is. And then this will point at the airport. This will be the orientation of the runway. So there's 30, 3, 4, wait, 3, 3, 50, 4, 4, 55. I can't see that far. What is it? 33, 50, 4, 55. Yeah, one more click. Good enough, right there. So that'll tell us the direction where the runway is. This will tell us where the airport is. You can see we're about to pass it, right? So if we look, it should be out the window somewhere get rid of this thing. I didn't mean to leave this up. All right, quick breath. Let's bring the spoilers in and arm them. We're almost at 1600, so we just need to keep an eye on our speed now. Let's get our heading bug set up. We're gonna, we are gonna, gonna keep autopilot going a little bit here. Um, let's spin this around and 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 around we go. Then we have to reset that in a minute. Let's do heading bug. There we go. And now we're just gonna use throttle, keep our speed. So throttle, 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 throttle. Let's keep that speed up. We're going too slow. Going too slow for this set of flaps. There we go. I can't see my speed because the yoke's in the way. There we go. Keep that speed going. We want to stay at 1600. 
which autopilot will do, but we want to have our speed up. Speed up, please. Let's do another second. How come our flaps went in? That's weird. I must have bumped it. There we go. That's better. Five flaps for the speed. Good. Okay. We're going to fly over the water, and then we'll do a downwind leg, or crosswind, and then a downwind, and then we'll go to the airport. So, let's get ready to can fly this thing. Oh, boy. We're really low to the ground, but this is what we need to be. Um... Hopefully we can see the runway because we don't have a localizer. There's only one localizer approach, and that was 13, which we can't do. So let's see here. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to take over in a minute. We're going to reset heading bug to 35 so we know where the runway heading is. And then this double line here will tell us where the airport is. I think we can do this. All right, let's bring the heading bug now so that we're going to do a crosswind leg. This would be 90 degrees off of 35. So we know that'll work. We'll keep our speed back. We're going a little fast for the flaps that we have. Plus, you don't want to go that fast anyway. So let's load this thing down. I know it looks like we're low to the ground, but 1600 is what they want us to do. So that's what we're going to do. Do we have time to look outside? Um, no. Well, the runway is right here. So we're parallel to the runway right now. See this? So we want to get this now to 35 already. Because we're going so dang fast, it doesn't take very much. So here we go. All right, I wish I could do some sightseeing, but I really can't because of our slow speed and our flaps, and I got to keep an eye on that throttle constantly, and there's just way too much going on to sightsee. So we are just going to do this together. Hopefully the video isn't getting too long. Um, I have no idea how long it's been because I've been splitting up the recording segments at a posit and 10 to something. So now we're back. Uh, let's see here. I can look out the window maybe. Yeah, there we go. Looking good. All right. Spoilers are armed, right? Spoilers are armed. Everything is good to go up here. It's just a matter of landing this plane. All right, we're almost next to the runway. or next to the airport, so we will be switching to runway heading in a moment. Then we'll hand fly. So let's kill autopilot. And let's fly by hand. Um, we're going to turn to the left and point at that airport. And hopefully we're far enough away that we can see the runway. Now, we are completely visual now because we do not have RNAV. So the only localizer approach is um, runway whatever it was, 13. There are DME and VOR approaches, but for 35, I don't know. I didn't have time to look it up. So we're just going to fly visually now. No idea where we are. We're just pointing at the airport. I don't see it because we went out so far. How far away are we? Wait, did we go 20? No, how far are we? Six miles from the airport. Okay. Whoops. Keep an eye on everything here. Let's see. We need flaps 30, I believe. But it's too soon for that. We'll keep it where it is. Just literally looking for an airport. Since we don't have ATC to help us, we're going to stay about this height until we... Oh, there it is. And there's only 35. Nice. All right, so I believe it's the runway on the left. I could be wrong, and we could be landing on the wrong runway, but we're going to do it. All right, so with the wind direction that it is and the runway, there should really not be a crosswind. It should just be directly into the wind. So let's start slowing down. Pappy says we got one red, which is fine, um, but we got to slow down. We have to slow down. Next set of flaps. Here coming down. Oh, boy, this is fun. This is a lot of fun. Spoilers are armed. We need two more sets of flaps. Alt is being... I don't care about alt because we're going to blow it now. Go away. And last set of flaps. We just got to watch that throttle. So all we're going to do is stay at that second flag right now. And then... Okay, good. We're two and two on the pappy. And then when we get closer, we will go... Well, we're at touchdown speed now. Stay up. Stay up. Faster, faster, faster. Oh, we do have a little bit of from the left. Okay. So we're going to left wing down right rudder. Okay, we're too low. Throttle, 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 throttle. I'm almost full throttle to keep us above stall. Holy moly. This thing is hard to fly. And there's the boat reaction. Slow reaction. Now we're going too fast. <sighs> Let's do what we can here. We haven't had a good landing in this plane in a long time due to, like, sim issues and the crashing. This is weird. This used to be my most solid plane to land in, and lately it's been the most difficult. And now we have crosswind landing and everything. 
All right, here we go. This is touchdown speed, but let's just keep it here. Point down for a little bit more speed. Throttles back so you don't just sort of don't descend too much. Or whatever. I said that backwards. Who cares? We're just going to land the plane. I'm going to steer a line. I got to land this plane nicely. It's about time. I bounced? What? Oh my goodness. Whatever. I don't even know what to say. Reversers, auto brakes are working. Oh my goodness. You know what I'm going to say. For years, the 727 was my most solid plane for landing and everything in between. And the last three or four flights, I have not been able to do it. But when I did my practice flight, I did a video of practice landings, they were perfectly fine. What in the world is going on with me? I don't even know where we're going. I just vacated. Um, <laughs> let's look outside and see where we are. Um, we don't want to go that way. That's just parking. We want to turn around. Oh, there's a taxiway there. We, where, where are we going? Way over there. Whoops. Okay, let's get the taxi view here and um, take Yankee. Good grief. Well, at least I didn't crash. How come my spoilers didn't come in? Spoilers back in, please. At least I didn't crash. Um, a couple flights ago, we bounced and crashed. And then the sim did a, something happened with the sim and then we crashed. And then I did practice flight video and all my landings were like as perfect as you could get and now the next flight autopilot went weird and we crashed and then this flight we bounced holy moly rocky i don't understand what the problem is but it works in 11.40 that's the main reason for this flight but <sighs> i don't know i don't know what's going on Alrighty. um let's see what are we going to do here we're just going to head out, and I don't know, we're just going to follow this a little bit <laughs> until we find a place to park. Alright, I think we're just going to make a U-turn here and go to the left. On the plus side, though, looking at the bright side, our navigation was great, considering we were set up for the only ILS approach, and we were changed because of the weather, and um, we don't have RNAV or GPS, so I couldn't use it. There may have been a DME or VOR approach, but I just didn't have time to access the charts and everything. I guess I could have paused the sim, but... So given the circumstances, our navigation back to the airport without cheating, in air quotes, was great. So we have that to be thankful for. Um, I just don't understand what my problem is with this thing. I'm most disappointed because this used to be, like, THE plane. This was, like, this was my jam. <laughs> this plane. And I don't know what's happening to me, but we're going to follow this taxi line and park next to that American plane. Although I don't know how we're going to get around it without hitting it. If we stay on the line, so we're just going to swing wide here. Um, we should probably turn our landing lights off before we make people mad and we can disarm that. Um, there we go. Where are we going? Let's stay here. Um, how long was that flight time? Um, I don't even know because I don't remember. I'll In editing, I'll write down how long it was. Maybe, if I remember... Let's see here, let's turn to the right and park here. Be careful, mind the wings of our neighbor. And then we'll let the people out. Um, hopefully the stuff in the overhead compartments didn't get tossed around too much. Oh, he's leaving anyway. Okay, a little bit more and stop here. I said stop here. Why? I have the brakes held. Stop. I'm not doing anything. It's going back and forth. Parking brake. Very strange. Okay. Let's see here. What is next? Um, let's see. I have a few checklists behind here. Okay. Taxi lights off. 
taxi, taxi, taxi lights off. GPU and air cart. Whoops, I bumped my microphone. GPU and air cart. Oh, geez, I'm clicking too many things here. There we go. External power. Uh, like that. Fuel can come off. Which is here. We shouldn't need APU because we're hooked up to external power. So we should be fine. Let's turn all these lights and come off now. Battery off. And things should stay on a little bit because we have external power. Yes, good. Air car connected. Good. Seatbelt can come off. And anything you want to play with, if you want to turn all these switches off, you can. It's up it's up to you how you know we can turn things off if you want to. You don't have to. We have, we have external power so people can see what they're doing. We have cockpit lights so we can see what we're doing. This one doesn't work with external power for some reason. That's kind of funny. I assume that's on purpose, like a mistake on purpose. That's it. Your stairs are coming down, um, which is shift F1. I can barely reach. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the flight. I certainly did. You know what I want to talk about, but I'm trying hard not to. So let's just skip all that and just say, if I were a subscriber, thank you for your support. If I'm asking, please, uh, please subscribe. Please share with your friends. If you have an idea for a flight, please put it in the description below. I think I need to do more flights with this plane. It's just really involved of planning and um, getting my chart written out and everything. But it's worth it. So look for more flights on this very soon. And then we'll make some, some GA stuff. But otherwise, hopefully you enjoyed it. I certainly did. And I'll catch you next time.